We all have one, but how much do you know about yours? That's right, I'm talking about nozzles. A 3D printed nozzle is the bit where the melty plastic squeezes out the tiny hole. So what's the difference then between brass and copper? If I can print fine with a brass nozzle, why are there hardened ones? Today we're going to be taking a look at all the important aspects about nozzles to make sure you know all the differences in case you want to buy another one. This segment of the video is sponsored by PCBWay, a fully featured custom PCB prototyping service including design, manufacture and assembly. For more information head over to PCBWay.com, link in the description. Okie dokie then, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the input diameter. This is the kind of diameter at the top or back of the nozzle and is sized to fit your filament. As it's sized to fit the filament there is generally two types, one to fit 1.75 filament and one to fit 2.85 filament. The 1.75 filament is about a two millimeter hole, give or take, and for 2.85 filament, it's around three or just over three millimeters. This hole carries down most of the length of the nozzle right the way until somewhere near the tip. Neither one is particularly better than the other, it just depends what filament you use. The next we're going to talk about is the output diameter or the nozzle diameter or bore diameter. So this is the hole at the tip of the nozzle where the filament actually comes out. This is the real business end of the nozzle. There are quite a few types here. They range from very small to quite large. So your very smallest will be somewhere in the range of 0.15 millimeters, while your very large hole types can be up to 1.2 millimeters. So a really broad range. The most common size nozzle is 0.4 millimeters, and that's what you would kind of call a standard nozzle. So which one is better? As a general rule of thumb, the smaller the bore, the more detail you'll be able to achieve, the larger the bore, the faster your print times will be. So for example, if you're printing something with a very small bore diameter, such as this one here, your print time will be longer because you only have a tiny little hole. You'll be printing very narrow lines and very small layer height, which means you'll need a lot of layers and a lot of pathing to get the kind of wall thicknesses that you want. Of course, because you're printing with a much smaller nozzle, which is basically printing much thinner lines, you'll be able to get lots and lots of detail into that print. The detail increase in the XY plane generally corresponds to the line width. This is often very slightly larger or very slightly smaller than your nozzle diameter. Always bear in mind though that as you move down to smaller nozzles in particular, that your resolution of your uh, extruder may be a limitation with your amount of fine control on the plastic coming out of a smaller nozzle. The thing that you need to bear in mind most when you switch to a larger nozzle is the fact that your flow rate for any given hot end, regardless of the nozzle generally, will be about the same. So if you are printing at X speed, say 60 millimeters a second with a 0.4 nozzle, if you increase to a 0.8 nozzle, you're going to need to significantly reduce the printing speed in order to retain the same flow rate. Of course, there's much more to a nozzle than just a hole that goes in and a hole that comes out. Let's talk about the material that it's made of and also a little bit about the coatings which you might have on top. The material a nozzle is made of is arguably the most important factor. For a start, it determines the conductivity, the heat capacity, and of course the hardness, unless of course you have a coating on the top. The conductivity is basically how quickly thermal energy is moving through that material. When we're talking about a nozzle and 3D printing, a high thermal conductivity will mean a very even temperature throughout the nozzle. So where it's being heated in the heat block will be very near to the same temperature at the very tip of the nozzle if you have a high conductivity. Heat capacity is the amount of thermal energy that it takes to change the temperature of a material. So if it takes a lot of energy to change it by one degree Celsius, then a very small energy input is not gonna have much effect on the overall temperature. However, a material with a low heat capacity can be significantly affected by temperature with just a very small energy input. In terms of 3D printing, a high heat capacity will mean a very stable temperature. So once you get to a particular temperature, staying there will be easy because there's a lot of kind of, it's like a big pool of water to pull from. If you're taking like cups of water out of a swimming pool, you don't notice that change in the swimming pool. However, if you're taking cups of water out of your kettle very quickly, there's not much left. The hardness of a material is how resistant it is to scratching. So as your nozzle oozes filament out the end and it kind of wipes across it, that wiping is a bit like, like wiping it on a piece of sandpaper. Of course, general purpose materials like a normal PLA or PTG is very low in terms of its abrasion. So 
it doesn't require a very hard nozzle. If you use filaments with carbon fill and things like that, they can be very abrasive on the end of your nozzle, so hardness becomes much more important. So what types of materials are used? Well, of course, we've got brass, first off. We've got hardened steel, stainless steel, tungsten carbide, mm, copper, generally nickel plated, other coated nozzles like Nozzle X from E3D, and of course we have the kind of combination nozzles, such as the Olsen Ruby, which is a brass body with a ruby tip. So which one of these is better then? Brass is great for the majority of 3D printing. It's a hard enough material to resist most filaments, it's fairly cost effective, it's easy to machine into precise shapes with very tiny holes in the end, and it has a fairly good thermal conductivity. Definitely not the best, but far from the worst. For these reasons, brass is the most common material type found on 3D printed nozzles. Nearly all consumer printers come with a brass 0.4 mm nozzle. Hardened steel is a cost effective method for adding the ability to print harder materials with a filler such as carbon fibre, however it still has a fairly low thermal conductivity so you may have to reduce your printing speeds compared to what you would have maybe with a brass nozzle. However, still does have quite a high thermal capacity so you can expect fairly good stability. Copper is a little bit like a brass nozzle, sort of, in that brass is made up of copper and of course zinc but copper alone is way more conductive. Copper itself though is much softer and oxidizes very quickly, so it often gets coated. Generally, a nickel, electroless nickel plating is used, which is a little bit harder, quite a lot harder in fact, and also has a kind of low, I don't know what the measure is, but it doesn't stick to plastic very well. This kind of low coefficient of friction sort of makes the pushing of filament out of the nozzle a little bit uh, easier, kind of reduces the force required, as long as that electroless nickel plating is up inside the nozzle, and of course means that plastic will stick less to the outside of the nozzle, which can sometimes end up getting deposited elsewhere on the print. Alongside being three to four times more conductive than brass, copper also has a very high heat capacity, meaning that it can be very temperature stable, and thus makes it excellent for high temperature printing applications up to like somewhere in the region of 500 degrees Celsius. As you might have guessed from speaking about all these fancy things, a copper plated nozzle is generally quite a bit more expensive than a brass one, but it is great for high end applications, especially those printing at high temperatures or very high speeds or flow rates. Tungsten carbide is a very hard material, which primarily makes it very good for printing abrasive filaments. Again, these carbon filled materials, which can wear away nozzles very quickly. Not only that, but tungsten carbide has a melting point of 2600 degrees Celsius, so it's also obviously great for high temperature applications. The thermal conductivity is relatively good, being about the same as brass, but the thermal capacity is a little bit lower, I think. I haven't checked that. Again, of course, it is on the expensive side of things. Lastly, we have these composite nozzles. So by that, I mean nozzles made up of more than one material. We'll specifically talk about the Olsen Ruby just because it generally is the most popular multi-material composite nozzle. The main body is made up of brass, which as we've talked about is easy to machine, cost effective and fairly good thermal conductivity. And the tip is made of Ruby. Ruby is a mineral which is exceptionally hard, nearish to that of diamond, which makes it very resistant to scratching. The downside very significantly for rubies is that they are very brittle, meaning that a small amount of force can cause them to crack, break, or just crumble. Not only that, but rubies are really bad conductors of heat, which is why they're only used right in the tip where the abrasion resistance is critically needed. Of course, in all cases, the quality of the manufacture and the quality of the materials used will affect the overall performance. So buy from a reliable source that's publishing actually what is in the nozzle, what the nozzle's made of, and the kind of tolerances, etc., that they manufacture to. On the subject of quality, if you think this video is good quality, hit like down below and subscribe. It's free to do and a great way to support the channel. The last thing we're going to talk about is the thread. Now this might not seem like a very interesting or important aspect of the nozzle, but it's actually a bit more interesting than you might think. The thread is obviously this helical part at the top of the nozzle, which allows you to screw it into something. I'm sure you all know how a screw works. The important factors here are the thread type and the overall length. Of course, if the thread type is wrong, you just won't be able to screw it in. 
if the thread length is incorrect, then you'll probably end up with a situation where you've got a lot of the nozzle sticking out of the heat block, meaning you won't be able to heat it sufficiently. Or if it's too short, then you're gonna have the gap between the heat break and the nozzle where your filament's just gonna form a big splodgy mess and just not work. It's important to have the right thread type and the correct length for your heat block or extruder design. Fortunately, it is quite easy to make sure you get the right one. There are significant differences between them. For example, this standard E3D V6 nozzle has a five and a half millimeter length thread, and it's the M6 by one millimeter pitch. These are metric threads. This is the Volcano nozzle, which again is the M6 by one millimeter pitch, but is around 14 millimeters long. Now, you can obviously see these are quite different. The Super Volcano is much longer still, and that one's probably like 50 or 60 millimeters, I think. I don't know exactly, I don't have one, but they're very, very long. There are other thread types used on nozzles, such as the M10 thread found on the Dice Design standard nozzles, but generally speaking, M6 by one is certainly the most common. So what's better then? Well, generally speaking, the thread type is not going to matter too much. Whether it's M10 or M6, that's probably been chosen for other design reasons, so we're not going to get into that too much here. Suffice to say, as long as you buy the right one and it fits, then that's probably fine for you. The thread length, however, is very important. Now, obviously, it's not the thread itself that's critical here, but the overall length of the nozzle is important. The reason being, the longer the nozzle, the longer the heat block is likely to be. The longer the heat block is, the more surface area you have where thermal energy can move from that heat block into the filament. Because that generally is the limiting factor regarding flow rate of your filament out of the nozzle, the more surface area you can get, the higher your flow rate can be, and the faster you can print. With all that being said, of course, the best nozzle is the one that's right for you. So one that can print the layers and line widths that you want to achieve with the length and thread that fits your heat block to achieve the flow rates that you want to achieve, and of course, made out of a material that can print the filaments that you want to print. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.